Welcome back. And as you see, the agriculture is the backbone of our country. We look at consumer information because it's lacking. What is your advice on that? Because when you go to developing nation, you find that they actually specify. You know what you're buying, you know what you're eating. But here in Kenya, it's you know it's so long as you eat, it's okay, or so long as you buy, it's okay. What do you think about consumer information and consumer rights? Because I think that is what now is bringing all this. Uh, uh, confusion as pertains at genetically modified organisms. Consumer awareness in Kenya generally is very, very, very low. You find people accepting very, very poor standards of service. I've seen people buy a loaf of bread, even sometimes people in my family, you buy a loaf of bread, you find a, a, like a loose string in it, and you pull the string and continue eating the, the, the bread. Or you buy a bottle of soda, and it's a piece of broken glass at the bottom, and you still continue taking it or don't take any action about it. So the consumer awareness generally in Kenya is very, very low, let alone consumer awareness of this of our vehicles. I think what uh, we need to do is to give the public the right to know. The right to know, by that I mean, if we produce or we produce, we produce any GMO products in the market, let them be labeled so that people can make an informed choice whether they want to buy that product or not. There are some countries in the world where you know the, 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 the product is clearly labeled whether, when it, whether it has GMO components or not. Then people have got that choice of buying that product or not. But they are informed in advance so they can take you know, informed decisions of whether to take the, buy the product or not. Yeah. But people have a right to know. True. And when you talk about the reluctance that consumers have, especially, yeah, you, you mentioned it very well in Kenya, are we enabling this behavior? Because if you are reluctant, you find you don't care. So long as whatever you are given, you eat or you don't eat, you don't take any action. Are we enabling this kind of behavior? Yeah. And therefore it makes uh, the people who are supposed to inform equally relaxed. Yeah. I, I don't believe we should have uh, more you know, organizations, even parasitos and NGOs, um, in improving the, the issue of uh, consumer awareness. Letting people know that, you know, if you're not happy with the provision of a particular service or you're happy with a particular product, you've got the right to, to approach the company that's producing that service or that is giving that service or producing that product and get a compensation. And I don't think we Kenyans have the, the confidence and the and the, the agility to confront, you know, uh, poor standards of service and poor, poor standards of products. People accept you know, what comes yeah. just like that is. So we should I believe we should have uh, um, more uh, we should pro proactivity yeah. from government agencies or even NGOs yeah, in ensuring that uh, consumer awareness is, uh, is, is, is increased and improved. Okay. Thank you so much, viewer. You've heard for yourself. You can see we have so many challenges as pertains environmental conservation and sustainability. And it's only you at an individual level and me that can act and ensure that we live in a sustainable world. And that's why we bring you all this information so that it can be able to help you and create awareness. You can follow us on all our social media handles. That is on Twitter at EnviroCare Global on Instagram at EnviroCare Global, on Facebook at EnviroCare Global, and on LinkedIn, LinkedIn at EnviroCare Global. My name is Rose Gishure, and we are here to inform you so that we can act on a sustainable world. We move to the next uh, question. When you talk about the impact of GMOs to consumers, we are equally looking at the environmental risks that are associated with uh, GMO introduction. Maybe you can enlighten us. What are some of these risks that come with uh, GMO introduction, especially to our environment? I think one of the criticisms that um, the anti-GMO uh, groups have been talking about is that uh, the GMOs are replacing our traditional varieties and therefore we lose that, that gene pool. But let me say that uh, this is not um, uh, this, 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 this problem does, it is not entirely um, on GMOs alone. Even when we introduce other varieties that are conventionally uh, bred, they replace our traditional varieties. So it is not a problem that can be identified purely on GMOs. It is a, it's a problem that you have to deal with 
uh, across board. But what should happen is that before introduction of new varieties, whether they are GMOs or whether they are traditionally bred crops, we collect the traditional varieties and save them so that if we need to reintroduce them in the agricultural uh, system again, then we have got the possibility to, possibility to do so. And that is already happening. Um, I know, for example, that uh, Kenya CARO, Kenya Agricultural Livestock um, Research Organization, has over the years been collecting traditional varieties of maize, beans, uh, potatoes, and all that, and conserving all those varieties in a gene bank. They have a big gene bank at, uh, in Bukoka, and I've been there myself. The gene bank has got more than 150,000 different varieties of traditional uh, food crops. So that even if we lose these varieties, uh, from the farmer's field, we can later reintroduce them from the gene bank back into the agricultural systems. Of course, there are scientific methods of preserving the seeds. For example, they have to be kept under minus 20 degrees centigrade in cold rooms, and they have to be dried to a very low moisture content. So as long as we mitigate, we, we, as long as we take the mitigation uh, actions, it will be okay to introduce this uh, Variety these crops into, into our fields mm. as long as we have ensured that the mitigation measures mm. are, are in place. Yeah. The other, the other, the other um, criticism mm. is that um, genes from genetically modified uh, crops will flow into fields and uh, sort of affect the other other crop varieties that are not genetically modified. Uh, that are not genetically modified, and that's a valid. It's a valid uh, you know, concern, and, but there's no way of ensuring that there will be no gene from, from genetically modified crops into, into other fields. There's no way of 100% ensuring that that does not, that, 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 that does not happen. Yeah.